Disclaimer before we start, we're gonna cover Julia again, and we've covered Julia and Eileen, which I guess is just Julia now. And in the past, her viewers have not been as happy with my coverage of her relationship. They have felt that I was judgy. So I just wanna say out loud that I am gay judging, which means like we're not really judging you as a person. We are using real people's stories to kind of reflect on our own. So we're never really talking about Julia or the people that I cover in videos. We're really talking about ourselves. Julia is a person who has quite a reputation on the internet of dating older partners. She has been previously identified as a lesbian and has recently come out as, I guess, fluid or bisexual or pansexual. I'm not sure of her exact label. I kind of knew this was coming because when I originally covered Julia and Eileen, I got an email from someone. I didn't do the research, so I didn't feel comfortable sharing the story. Though the email had been pretty detailed, I just didn't feel comfortable covering it as if it was true. I just didn't know. But now that Julia is out and she's talking about and introducing her boyfriend to us, I thought, we could go ahead and have that conversation. So a heads up, you can see in the comment section of her video, she says, I was fucking miserable for years. Now I'm finally happy. Just let me be and stop being so goddamn d judgmental. Absolutely. I certainly don't want to push a narrative on my channel that we have the right to condemn people for living differently. And I think this is really difficult because on my channel, we do explore different bubbles. We want to celebrate people's differences. But what do we do when people's differences are really just about ethics or morals in this situation? We don't know anything about these people though. So. Maybe it's perfectly fine. Maybe it's not fine. We're really, we're really not judging Julia. We're really judging what we're seeing, which, you know, as a YouTuber is always partially the truth. It's never the full truth, right? Just YouTuber to YouTuber, I know how difficult it is to have people tear apart your life. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and, and uh, meet her new man. Hi, sweeties. Welcome back to the channel. <gasps> oh my God, I can't believe I'm filming this. This is gonna be the most special video ever because I am here with the most special person ever. Uh, uh, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful boyfriend, Keith. Hello. <laughs> so today I am going to be asking him some of the questions you sent us. I'm sort of like interviewing him for your benefit, but I, I know the answers. I hope. Now, one criticism I've had of Julia, again, as maybe a content creator more than a consciousness, is that she does sort of have too much of a parasocial relationship, in my opinion, with her audience. And I think that she lets the audience way too much into her life. To be fair, though, her best performing videos tend to be about her life. Some people have even accused Julia in the past as queer baiting. Now, look, I just think Julia is probably a sexually fluid person. She's pansexual, bisexual, some sort of sexual, and this is valid. I remember as a very young person identifying as a lesbian because I didn't think bisexual is an option. And as a pansexual person myself, I know that gender is confusing and what you're attracted to can be complicated, but it's mostly the pattern of partners she chooses that I think stands out to all of us, which is the age difference. I called this man elderly, who seems very lovely so far, in my title, not as an insult, but sort of as like a descriptor of why this is so interesting because he is quite elderly in comparison to her. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Julia's not quite 30 and I don't know how old Keith is, but um, he's definitely over 30. We'll see. Well, What's your name? What's your full uh, name? I have several names. <laughs> All right, so before we start, please subscribe and activate the notifications. <laughs> Is that what I sound like? <laughs> what do you guys think so far? I mean, obviously the accusations that Julie gets is that she's a gold digger. But then after her and Eileen divorced, it was it came out that Eileen was the one who was really bad with money and that Julia was kind of funding their life, which is interesting. So obviously the number one question people have been asking is, what's your name? My name is Keith Wood. Beautiful name. Very simple. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm originally from Yorkshire, north of England, but I've lived in London for about 25 years now. A lot of people asked how we met. I bought a property in Kensington where Julie was living. I bought a property and um, for modernization. Uh, my dad was a builder, so there has a certain amount of manual skills that I have as well. I bought this property and renovated it and converted it to grade two listed property. So a lot of attention to detail. And during that uh, place called South Kensington, there's a Pret Pretamorgia, if you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I used to pop out there for tea, lunch, coffee, whatever. And one day I bumped into a beautiful young lady. <laughs> 
we just started chatting, funnily enough, about Chelsea Football Club. I have season tickets. I've always followed Chelsea Football Club. So he's got money, season tickets. That's interesting. They met casually. That's also not surprising. I'm going to say like I have pretty neutral vibes so far from the both of them. Uh, that started the conversation. We met a couple of times for coffee there. We then went to um, football matches. I've, I've, I say I have season tickets there, so I went to some football matches and became good friends and things moved on from there. Aww. Aww. <laughs> People said, I hope this time we're not like making out on camera or anything. <laughs> I don't think we'll be making out, no. <laughs> You're blushing. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. <Aww. laughs> no, no, there'll be no... Uh, no, hanky-panky. <laughs> People also asked if Keith has any children. Yes, I do. I have two children, a boy and a girl. They are grown up, very proud of them. They still live in Yorkshire. Okay, so Maven says, I feel like she's exploding old people. This is how I felt with Julia. I've never been into Julia's content. Just as a queer person myself, I've never found myself drawn to her content. It just feels so exploitative and it feels so... Sen like sensationalizing your life. And I'm not a big fan of people who sensationalize their life. I burn out watching people do this to themselves. And it's not that, you know, she's a young person taking advantage of old people or old people taking advantage of young people. It just feels like a type of relationship that tends to occur in certain categories of people that I would categorize as like a settling kind of relationship where it's convenient, it's accessible. They're both giving it sort of like an exchange that's specific. Like I doubt this is the love of her life, but also to be fair, it doesn't have to be. She's allowed to have sort of relationships that are less about that. So what I think is more interesting is the fact that she shares his full name. They talk about his life, that they're on camera together. Look, maybe it's I'm maybe I'm just like a very private person. I just feel like privacy is kind of king and privacy is so important. And maybe it's because in the past I have had partners on the internet and it was a mistake. Sharing too much of my life was a mistake for me in the past because it is exploitative. It lends itself to so much drama and you can see this. I can think of 12 different YouTubers just off the top of my head that I just, I see this with them and I think, oh, like this is, I remember all their breakups and all their drama and it just, it's a lot. So I'm not sure why she does this, but I feel like it's a validation from her audience. I think she wants the validation. It also is great for views. I mean, we're literally covering it right now. You know how I say the world is a reflection of us as a whole? I'm a part of that reflection because I am now viewing Julia's relationship because it's interesting and weird, but also I'm hoping it teaches us something about ourselves. I am also part of the problem. I'm curious. I want to know what's going on. This is too interesting. And they are so sweet. I was like a bit worried because I never dated anyone who had kids before I was a little bit scared you know that they weren't gonna like me but I met them and they're both so lovely they are super super sweet I love your children and your grandchildren I have two grandchildren as well uh, from well isn't that lovely wow Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, really my daughter I met them too they're super cute I was really excited because I have step grandchildren now. <laughs> you never thought you'd say that, did you? <laughs> no, well. Why do they do that? No. Why are you doing that? Is that a joke? Am I autistic? Is that a joke? What is that? Is that a joke? You just started dating. You cannot be that serious. Listen, as somebody who I knew from the moment I talked to my husband, I was going to marry him. I get it. But also, what? What do you mean step grandchildren? Like, that's a joke, right? Please help me. This is not the love of your life. From my understanding, I could be wrong about the timeline. I'm sure maybe she'll answer it in the video. But they were definitely a part of the open relationship part because Julia said she was experimenting with gender when she was with Eileen. Okay, traded in Eileen for Keith. And then I started my own company about 15 years ago, mm. which takes up a lot of my time. Mm. It's hard work, but it brings its rewards. You're very hardworking. That's one of the things I said about you on the previous video, and that he's really, really hardworking, like me. So obviously a lot of people have asked if you've met my ex and how you get on because you know i've told people that we're still friends and everything and they're curious about that because it was so public and everything yes oh, I yes uh, i've met eileen i wonder why it was so public what a mystery yes grace says the amount of personal information is crazy the amount of personal information is crazy we do not know we do not need to know any of this ma'am been out several times together not me and her all of us uh, <laughs> we get on fine there's there's no problem um think over time that will probably slow down as as things move on as they do but i'm sure 
I'm sure she'll remain a friend and I'm sure she'll remain your friend as well. And so a few people have asked what your sexuality is and gender identity and all that stuff. I would sort of say I'm mainly straight, but there's a touch of bisexual in there. I'm a very open-minded person. I understand and respect everyone. Oh. <laughs> and you're cisgender. What? <laughs> Cisgendered when you're not trans. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new oh, one I, I mean. think, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I don't mind so, either way. <laughs> I'm, I'm a boomer. <laughs> oh, you identify as a boomer. I identify as a boomer. Oh. <laughs> Is that an identity? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're cute. Yeah, you're oh. cute. Okay. That's the most important one. What's your star sign? Unfortunately, I don't know what his rising sign is. No, I don't. Yeah, because Keith doesn't know what time he was born, because, like, the exact time, because he was born at home. Most people were of my age born at home. And unfortunately, my parents have now gone, so I can't ask them. I'm going to be really adult right now. These are two grown-ups. They can do whatever they want. But regardless... I guarantee you the reason the divorce rate is the way it is and everyone is so unhappy and there's a loneliness epidemic is because y'all keep settling. And if this isn't settling, I don't know what it is. There is no cohesiveness. The energy is casual. It's too casual. It's a great sugar baby situation, age gap relationship, confiding in one another, seeking warmth in one another. But I just don't understand this or recognize this as like what I would call a lifelong relationship but it doesn't mean that it's invalid in terms of something casual like if we viewed this from a casual lens like good for them I hope they're happy but if you try to judge it from like a longevity perspective well there's probably a lot of problems here and again you know it is what it is I don't think there's necessarily anything unethical happening here but I think that if they were more introspective, I'm not sure that this situation would occur in the way that it is happening. Like if this was my friend, I'd be like, what's going on? So what are we like doing with our life? Not because he's bad or she's a bad person, just because I think that this relationship feels like settling and you have the right to settle. I've talked to my friends about this. Like, so are we settling? What's happening? And they're like, yeah, I think I'm ready just to settle with somebody who isn't exactly my person, but you know, I'm happy. And I'm like, okay. I mean, that's a decision. People can do that. I don't want to be too judgmental of Julia because I know everybody is, but it's probably just because we're concerned about the pattern of behavior that we've seen from her over the years, which is pretty parasocial of us. So I also don't want to be inappropriate and think of it that way. Anytime I see an age gap relationship where the younger person is younger it just it makes me feel concerned but it's none of my business at the same time right discord says i found the video she did right before this one is more interesting where she explains her current relationship with him is responding to those concerns oh okay we'll watch that after i think it's great i'm i think i'm a very lucky man um, oh, i am uh, no I yeah. i'm a very lucky man it means a lot to me you filming a video with me i know it's like a bit of a weird thing to do, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't bother me particularly. Like I say, I'm nothing to hide, and uh, but I do think that I'm probably not the most interesting person in the world to, <gasps> yes, to be. Yes, you are! Yes, you are! <laughs> she talks to all of her partners like they're stupid, and I don't like it. That's what I've never appreciated either. She talks to all of her partners like they're babies, and they're stupid. And I don't like it. I don't like it when the older partner does it. I don't like it when the younger partner does it. And look, I don't mean to be judgmental. I really don't. I am gay judging sis. It's Pride Month. But I do not like the way like she infantilizes and uses baby tones with her partners. But to be fair, I think her partners kind of like it. You know how age gap relationships, it's usually the younger person being mentored by the older person. I actually think Julia has a pattern of the reverse, choosing older people who want to bottom from the top. Like Julia kind of tops from the bottom and her partners, though the mature and quote, quote, like breadwinners, even though that's not the case with Eileen, like they want to be taken care of by Julia. Like Julia, yeah, like I think their dynamic is the reverse of the traditional age gap relationship. I think she wants to be a princess and wants to be taken care of care of but then emotionally she switches and take takes care of her elderly partners which is very interesting <laughs> i think they're probably far more interesting people than me <laughs> no no way nobody <laughs>
By the way, if anybody wants to follow Keith on Instagram, he's starting his own his own social media presence. Oh, cringe. Rashad Crenshaw with the super chat. Let's go. No message. I'm going to assume the message is happy pride. Thank you, Rashad. Appreciate that. She, Conrad says she has a nursing home fetish. I mean, Abby says, do you mind baby words saying things, thinking of things, words that you only share with your partner? I don't mind baby talk. I don't mind baby words. I don't mind baby anything. What I mind is when those things are being done in sort of a inappropriate or infantilizing way in a negative way. I don't mind anything you do with your partner, period. It's not my business except you know why you're doing it so like I don't mind if somebody like <sighs> throws like a little tantrum or whatever as long as it's actually just a show and it's not real right like who wants a grown-up partner that throws tantrums for real it's one thing to act it out because it's cute and another thing to be serious about throwing a tantrum so in this case is she infantilizing her partner because it's performative or or is she infantilizing her partner because she literally is like, oh, you're such a sweet, dumb baby. Because a lot of the reverse age gap relationships are, let's say, the older men and younger girls or younger boys. The way that it works is they'll say like, oh, isn't that so cute? They're figuring out life and they'll infantilize them in the other way where it's like, look, they're learning how to pay bills. And it's kind of gross. It's like, why are you talking about your partner that way? And that's why I say a lot of settling relationships, especially age gap relationships, it's really just a matter of convenience. You're both lonely and you need something from one another. So it becomes sort of a transactional relationship. It is what it is. It's none of my business, but it's not my favorite form of relationship. When you're healthy, you don't choose it. So to choose it is kind of an indication of something. Now, with that said, some versions of successful age gap relationships exist within culture. So culture will change things. If you're both exactly on the same page from the same culture example, let's say from the same village, you know, growing up with the Middle Eastern background myself, that could make age gap relationships more accessible and reasonable. But usually when you're coming from two different bubbles and you're meshing together, it's usually a loneliness with inside of yourself that you're filling with this sort of um, relationship dynamic, in my opinion, relationship dynamic, in my opinion. You don't have to listen to me. I might not know anything. But as a person who was once younger, who dated older people, and even as a person who tried to date younger, it never quite felt like peers. But again, Julia's basically 30. So at this point, it's none of my business. I kind of feel like after 30, it's none of my business who you date, you know, at all. Not that it's any of my business at all, but you know what I mean. So she's like 29, 30, I think in the next 12 months. So she's a grown up. I just think it's interesting that she has a pattern. He's soon gonna be a social media star. Don't think so. <laughs> you will, you will. But follow him on Instagram. I think older people want to feel young. And so they date young people. I think he likes this. I think Eileen liked it. It is what it is. If you want to, it's entirely up to you. If you want to see some of my old historical pictures, you're quite welcome to just be nice. <laughs> be nice. Keith.e.wood is my Instagram. I think we covered a lot of the questions, but if you have any more questions, anything you would like to know about Keith or about us, our relationship, just let me know in the comments. If you have any video suggestions or anything like that too, let us know in the comments. Aiden says she likes older people because she knows exactly how to rub their egos to get them to do exactly what she wants them to do. It does feel like that. And I look, I don't know these people, so I could be so wrong about it. But I often do. Sometimes when I have... Um, like I see people in relationships with much younger people. I'm like, are you the one manipulating them or are they manipulating you? And it's not literally all the time. There are some examples of age gap relationships that are healthy, but those are very specific. Like like I said, they're deeply cultural. So they, they literally grew up in the same bubble, have the same belief systems. They're not people meeting from two different bubbles. There's a reason why age gap relationships work universally around the world with similar cultural, religious beliefs, cultural expectations, totally different bubble. And this bubble, it does feel more like that, but we could be totally wrong but I do get the same feeling. But then it's an exchange, right? They want to feel pampered. She allows it to happen. So that's the thing about transactional relationships, which is one way to be, not my favorite, but where there's an exchange, as long as they both know that's what's happening, then it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we filmed a video together. The first one. First one? Yeah. Uh... First and only, no. <laughs> Thank you for filming with me. I hope everybody's really nice and very welcoming to Keith. Welcome to our little online family. You're a sweetie now. I'm a sweetie. <laughs>
sweetie welcome and by the way for the people in the comment sections that like age gap relationships do you mean like 19 and 45 do you mean 12 and 17 do you mean you know 21 and 82 when you say you like age gap relationships what do you mean you know do you mean five to ten years do you mean you're both over the age of 40 so it doesn't matter you're both you know what do you mean by an age gap relationship to my channel sweetie <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so now, apparently she made a video about the relationship. I'm dating a boomer again. Hi, sweetie. Okay, let's check it out. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 